Hello, I'm Coley Otzel. Welcome to America's Salon Academy, the podcast. I believe that success leaves clues, so listen closely as I discuss life and business with some of the world's best hair artists. My guest for today was born and raised in Orange County, California. He currently lives in Irvine, California, and has been doing hair for 13 years. He owns and runs a salon named Alchemy Collective Hair Lab. He does independent education as well as educating with seven hair care. He specializes in alternative cuts and color. He has so much love for traveling that he is always planning his next getaway to do hair and see new places. My guest is Mikey Tease. How are you? Hello, Coley. I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to have you on here so we can discuss a little bit about your life and your business and everything that you, you've done up until this point. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm so stoked to be a part of this podcast with you and uh, to see what it's going to become of. Awesome. Yeah. So just a few questions about where you started earlier in your life. Uh, what did your mom and dad do for a living? Um, when I was younger, my dad was going to school to become a um, physical therapist. So he's in an industry as well where he helps people and, you know, makes them feel better. And my mom is a nurse assistant and works in the hospital. She's been there for, I don't even know, 15 years, probably 20 years. It's been forever. So she's also in an industry where she helps people. So I think it kind of just runs in the family. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So yeah. what types of things did you guys do for fun, like when you were growing up? Um, you know, growing up, my parents, as funny as it sounds, they weren't really into flying. So we did a lot of road trips. Um, we went to a few surrounding states, you know, in California, because I've been here, you know, born and raised. So we would always take a few road trips. You know, they'd always take us out to sea. San Francisco or the Grand Canyon or, you know, Nevada. <clears throat> and it, w it was fun. You know, we, we did a lot of, a lot of family stuff because I have a little brother as well. So we were always out doing stuff together, Disneyland, you know, beach days, camping. So we were always kind of the outdoorsy type. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. So do you think that that has something to do with why you love to travel now? You know what? Um, now that I think about it, I do think it has something to do with it because when I was younger, I had always wanted to see, you know, new places, new destinations, new pieces of land, places I've never even, you know, could imagine. And growing up, being able to actually gain finances, you know, in my in my 20s to do these things, that is why I think now that I am in my early 30s to where I have such a love to explore and travel is because I actually can now. Right. And um, yeah, you know, being younger, going to all these new places, it gave me such excitement to see, you know, new places, to um, see new cultures, you know, to uh, try new foods. And it was just an awesome place. So now that I'm older and, you know, my profession in, is in the hair industry, when I go and travel to all these new places now, I always bring my tools with me. <laughs> so I'll bring my clippers, you know, I'll bring my trimmers, my scissors, my combs and have a little bag of that. So when I travel, you know, I can just ask somebody on the beach in Thailand or on the island of Mykonos in Greece, you know, I've done haircuts and uh, it's just great to be able to connect with someone from that culture um, and giving them a haircut. And it's something as simple as a haircut. You can, you can, you know, basically feel this person's energy with, how it is living there and what it's like and hearing a little bit about their life and in their culture. So it's really wonderful how I can now combine the two of the two loves, you know, of traveling and hair into one. And uh, yeah, it's been great. You know, can't complain. Yeah, that's so inspiring and so true. I think a lot of us, you know, as hairstylists, that's exactly what we're after when we become hairstylists is to be able to connect, you know, to other people and feel where they're from and, and where they're going and, and, you know, and just always be there for those things. So that's really special. Yeah. How old were you when you knew you wanted to do hair? Um, so I think I was about 16 when I just picked up my first pair of Sally shears. Nice. <laughs> got my, got my first pair of shears at Sally's, you know, and, um, I just wanted to experiment with some friends because <clears throat> growing up around 16, 17 years old, you know, being in high school, I was a junior going into a senior year. That's kind of when I started to 
experiment with hair and hair color and you know staining mom's rugs in the bathroom and getting yelled at oh my kind goodness. Of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that was around the time when <clears throat> it became more of a thing that I liked to do that was fun so punk really got me into hair okay. um, rock rock and roll really got me into hair I would listen to these bands growing up being this punk kid in high school and you know I was that kid in high school that had like the crazy colored hair and patches all over his pants and studs all over his jacket. Like I was like that punk kid. And after high school, me and a group of friends would always get together and go to, you know, one of the other's house and hang out in their garage or the backyard and play some records. We always, we'd always go vinyl shopping for records. Cool. We would play records and stud our jackets and, you know, patch up our pants and do our hair. So this was kind of like a little fun lifestyle with my punk friends in high school that we would do and just kind of have fun doing. And so at that time, I really loved doing hair. And I also loved altering clothing. Um, I would always stud my friend's jackets for them or, you know, patch up some jackets, put a back patch on some, you know, denim jacket. Or I would distress some denim jackets or pants for them. And it was just like a hobby of, me, of mine that I really liked to do. So... Jumping in, you know, getting out of high school, I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to do hair? Am I going to do music? Or am I going to do fashion design? And I went to go check out Fitum, I remember, and it was cool. There was no one there. It was a day off. You know, there was no one around. It was just getting a tour of the school. And it was cool. You know, I was like, I I can probably do this. And then I went to a hair school, and they were open, and everyone was there. I remember it was Golden West College over here in Huntington Beach. And it was so cool walking in there. I did not know what to expect. You know, the music was playing from the speakers, the floor, everybody was doing hair. They're all wearing black scrubs and they had tattoos and, you know, they had piercings and they had crazy colored hair and um, they were all smiling. They were <laughs> all, you know, having a good time. And um, I really liked the vibe and the energy that was in that room because, I can feel energy very strongly. If you're sad, I can feel it. If you're happy, I can feel it. If something's bothering you, I can feel it. So maybe it's a blessing and a curse, but I literally felt that energy in that room. And it was so uplifting where I was just like, you know what? This is my tribe. Hmm. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to be like them. Wow. And yeah, and it was very inspiring seeing them because, you know, they're still in school. They're not out working in Beverly Hills making thousands of dollars a month. They're literally just learning. And To me, at that point, it wasn't even about, you know, how much money can I make? Or one day I'm going to own my own salon. Or one day I'm going to work for Stars in LA. It was none of that. It was was literally just, I have so much fun doing this. Right. These are my people. Yeah. Exactly. This this is my tribe. So when I went to school and um, saw all these people, I said, sign me up. And I remember the waiting list was about two months and I got right into it. So... During that two months of waiting, you know, I would still be with my friends after high school doing hair and letting everyone know I'm going to be doing hair. And um, some of my friends, you know, in high school were younger. They'd make fun of you and say, oh, you can't make money doing hair. Or they would say, you know, only punk kids are going to get that kind of hair. Or, you know, there's always just friends saying something to Debbie Downers. And and I was just always that kid, like, you know, I would just take it in and laugh about it and be like, yeah, okay, you know, that's fine. You know, but it's, it's, it's something I like to do. It's fun. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just kept going with my vision, no matter what anyone said, no matter what, all, you know, everybody's negative aspect of <clears throat> their perspective of life was like, I just kind of pushed all that to the side and had my vision strong of this is what I wanted to do because I had so much fun. So <clears throat> I finished school in 2007. Uh, Golden West went straight for a year full time. And in that whole time, I just I learned so much. You know, I made so many friends. I, I had so much inspiration. And I was motivated by everyone else, you know, doing what they do. So it was, it was really great starting to get into that industry when I was so young, you know, and to see what it's become now, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That is really, really cool. So what was your first love? Like, so when you actually got into hair school and you got your hands in there, what was your first, like, really, really what you loved to do? Um, you know, what? I really loved doing steam hair. <laughs> okay. Seeing hair was like the thing that I really loved to do. So it would be cutting. Like cutting was my thing. I would always get my feather razor, which I think I also got from Sally's, and um, a regular shaving razor. And I would always like go on my friend's hair and like add all this texture and make it super punky. And 
you know, edgy. So I think uh, cutting was the first thing I really loved to do because I just loved seeing that hair hit the floor Mm -hmm. and seeing what I can sculpt and mold, you know, with my tools and my hand and some hair product. Like it was just like that was probably like my first love is the definitely the cutting and styling part of uh, this industry. So how long do you think it took before you started to feel successful? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I think that took a long time. Um, you know, I, I was kind of the person, you know, maybe a lot, a lot of us do in this industry, like we're always like, you know, our own worst critic. Yeah, d- and, definitely. You know, with, you know, with every industry, I feel like that's, that's somebody. It's just how we are. It's in our, it's in our human code to, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes feel that. So I was always my own worst critic forever. I was like, oh, my fades, you know, they're not good enough. Or my color doesn't blend well enough. Or you know, whatever it was, like, this, 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 isn't, this isn't getting <clears throat> blonde enough. So it always, like, you know, criticize my work, but at the same time, the clients are always happy. So I think it took me so long to realize that, you know, as long as you're making the clients happy and you're gaining more clients and you're gaining more income and people are noticing who you are, that kind of gives you that feeling of success. Mm-hmm. So success, sometimes I think people get success mixed up with financial success. You right. Know? Like, People will think financial success is the same as success, and I don't. I think success to me is literally achieving what I went to school for and accomplishing my goals. And I think up maybe 10 years into it, like 8 to 10 years, I really started to feel that way, that I was accomplishing my goals and that I was um, succeeding in maintaining a clientele and in and succeeding and, you know, making people happy. And, um, you know, as the years go on, you obviously make a little bit more money and you get a little bit better at what you do. You elevate in your craft. And, you know, for me, it's been continuous elevation. Like I do not ever, you know, put myself at a point to where I think I know it all because we're in an industry that is forever elevating. You know, I don't think you can be a master in something that's continuously elevating, you know, throughout the years right so I just continuously you know elevate myself in classes and education um you know listening to podcasts in the morning getting my day started with good vibes and good intentions and so that really sets my day up for success as well by just feeling it and so 10 years I think into I think it was a little bit more when I was you know I'm doing this kind of feeling like you know you can look in the mirror and like be like yes I I did it and I'm doing it and I think when I got approached by a company to start educating, that's when it really set in. Yeah, I I really, I love that because a lot of times when I ask people that question, it is a difficult question to answer because there's so many different ways you could take success, right? Because you, like you said, like financial success or just like hitting your goals and hitting your marks, you know, different things like that. So I loved your answer. Um, You definitely you definitely exceeded my expectations with that question. <laughs> so <laughs> what, um, what fears did you have to overcome in order to, to get where you are? Um, you know what? It was confidence. It was literally the confidence to go up to someone, a client, and, you know, talk to them and really tell them, like, hey, this is, this is going to be my price. And this is going to be what we're going to do because it's going to look better on you. This isn't going to go with your face shape. You know, this color isn't going to go with your skin tone. Whatever it was, it was always just gaining that confidence and trying to make the experience for the client better. Right. And and also, you know, elevating my craft in um, cut and color with them. Like when I gained that confidence with that, you know, I think it just it worked out. It worked out really good for uh, the client and myself to where I had that confidence to tell them like, um, you know, about the experience that they're going to have today or about their color consultation that I'm going over with them. Um, Knowing all those little key factors going into a service really gave me more confidence for the future. So I would say that, yeah, definitely the confidence was, was a tough one. Yeah. I think that's so relatable, you know, to so many people, because that really is what it is. Like after so many years and after so many appointments, actually, you start to really look at yourself and think, okay, I know what I'm doing. I dedicate my life to this. I deserve, you know, something more. And so I think the confidence definitely speaks, you know, to a lot of people, the stance true for a lot of people. 
Yes, exactly. And that's one thing that I always will try to motivate, you know, anybody that coming into the industry is it definitely takes time to build that confidence. But, you know, it's it's one thing that's going to help us go even further, because I think confidence is key in teaching and, you know, showing somebody how to do something and explaining to a client of yours, you know, how the process is going to be, you know, product maintenance, what they're going to need to take home to take care of it um, into goes into pricing it goes into styling. Like when you have that confidence to show them all those little key factors of a service, it really helps the experience for them to trust you and to also feel comfortable. Right. So I, that's definitely what I've learned. So on that note, what is some advice that you would give to say new uh, hairstylists coming up through the game right now? Like what, what advice could you give them to kind of get where you, where you are today? Um, that that's a really good question, you know, and I, I think sometimes when I think of that, when I'm trying to help out my my fellow peers and friends, even on Instagram, you know, that message me and want to get some in insight on, you know, how to gain success, is I always tell them like just keep going, like sometimes um, the doubt will come, or you know, you might feel kind of kind of down that your haircut didn't come out the way you wanted it to, or you know, maybe your foils bled and you've got some, you know, bleeding marks. And like, sometimes we let ourselves down by those little things, but it's okay because you're working on something that eventually one day is going to get better and elevate as long as you keep practicing what not to do once you've done something that you didn't like that you did. Right. So I always tell people in the industry coming up that are in school, you know, I've taught, I've taught a class at Paul Mitchell and I've, I went to Golden West to talk about to talk to a few kids about this question actually, and it's it's you know just keeping up with with the industry on on Instagram education, um, YouTube education, going to classes like classes to me in education is as many times and as many people say it, it's one hundred percent true. Education is key. I think the kids that are coming up that are going through all the new educational classes and seeing all these new techniques online, it's, it's really beneficial to them because I didn't have that growing up. Okay. Like <laughs> that's why I think it took so long for me to kind of get to where I am because there was really, you know, the only classes I knew of when I graduated school was at a Vidal Sassoon or like at a Paul Mitchell or like at a Tony and guy or whatever. Like I didn't really know, you know, there was like, too many educational classes to go to and to keep up with and to learn from right so my thing would be just just to kind of stay updated um with what's going on in the world and to really utilize instagram and to utilize you know instagram marketing to find clients and to utilize uh youtube for online classes and um going to see your local uh class at a surrounding salon i think that's really going to be key for me and to surround yourself with those people that one day you wish to be around yourself, you know, doing hair. Right. And I think when you start to surround yourself in these classes and at these hair events and uh, whatnot, you, you're not only inspired by them, but you're motivated because these are the heavy hitters that went through it all. You know, they went through failure. They went through doubt. They, they messed up on their bleach foils as well. They messed up a haircut too. But now when you look at them now, you're like, this is what I want to be like, and this is kind of who I want to surround myself with because, you know, you are who you surround yourself with, right? Definitely, yes. Definitely. You know, when you're around that tribe, you guys create that vibe together. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing because we're always just trying to elevate together to the next, ne- the next level. Like, I think our industry, like, there's no competition, which is why I love it so much. Like, there's always just someone trying to help you get better, you know, and there's always someone just trying to, like, inspire you to do better. And to talk high, highly of you, of what you can do, you know, to get to a spot to where you want to be. So I think when you surround yourself with these artists at these hair shows and classes, that's really what's going to help you and motivate you just coming out of hair school or being brand new into doing hair. Right. Now, the one thing I can say about that is I know that there's a place, like as soon as you get out of beauty school, there's a place there where you have to learn your confidence and everything like we discussed. And then there's sort of like 
after a few years of being in the hair industry, you, I think you can find some kind of competition. But once you get through that level of people and get to the, the highest level, that's where you find people who are willing to help and people who are excited for you and, you know, people who are excited to help you and share their information and education and all these things. And so in my personal experience, there has been some competition through people, but once you get to a level where people have found their own type of success, it's no longer a competition. It's just, I'm happy for you. Let me share, you know, let's share this together kind of thing. Yes, totally. And, you know, there is, there is definitely a lot of friendly competitions out there. You right. Know, it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's just how it is in, in every industry. But like you said, it's when you get to that certain level, you know, it's, uh, it's great to really find out like who you are in this industry, what you want to be known as, what you want to, you know, specialize in, you know, and, and all those fun things. Right. So did you have a mentor at all? Um, Growing up in the industry, you know what, I had actually, I had a few mentors, and they never knew they were my mentor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they never knew that they were, but I really looked up to these people. Um, a, few, a few of them were salon owners, you know, and a few of them were uh, just stylists. And yeah, so to answer your question, I did have a few, yeah. Now, do you think it's a good idea for, um, say, people coming up through to have a mentor, or should they seek a mentor? Um, yes, that's a very good question because I think it's 100% beneficial and a great thing to have a mentor for those just starting out because, um, uh, it took me a couple of years to find one. And so the first, you know, maybe three to five years of being in this industry, I didn't really have a mentor. It was after that, those couple of years where I was, I was starting to find mentors too look up to or to ask questions to learn from or you know to be motivated from or to be inspired by so I was kind of in the dark for a couple years like I didn't know which direction to go I didn't know what I should do what kind of salon I should find you know where are these classes that I should take I didn't really know so many things that you know because like I said there wasn't really Instagram around and all that there was there was no hype with social media back in you know, 2007. It's like um, feeling your way around in the dark, sort of. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. It was definitely that feeling. So once I found that mentor, um, he helped me really set the path that I can see. Because before I couldn't really see a path, you know, it was just all blurry. But he really helped me see um, where I need to be and what I need to do to get there. And when, once I was told and kind of helped and guided and coached um, by my mentor of what I should do, how to get better at what I need to do and, you know, where I should go and try to find a salon and what salons would probably be a good fit for me, that's when it kind of helped me get on the road to where I needed to be. So I think it's really great for um, the new generation of stylists coming out and all the people in school coming out to really um, find that person that just helps guide them, you know? Yeah, it seems so. to get you further faster, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, because you're not stuck in the dark. You know, you have someone that's already been through the dark and that's already been through, you know, all of the things that you're going to go through. They've already been through it. So when those people approach you, it's definitely important to uh, hear what they have to say and to definitely take their advice. It, it's only beneficial for us. And it's just like you said, I mean, you know, I do education as well. And it's if somebody in your class thinks they know everything, you already right there know what type of person they are, what type of, you know, and you're kind of like, <laughs> okay, then why are you here? But uh, I think exactly what you said is, is perfectly right as far as like education and getting a mentor. Always be open to what other people are saying. You know, they will get you further faster if you're open to it. And so just don't be that person, right, that just thinks they know everything because that's where your education <laughs> stops. Yeah, exactly. And we all know that those people exist and we all maybe know one of those people personally. So <laughs> Right. And just you know, let them be, huh? <laughs> exactly. Just let them be. They're in their own world and that's okay. So, <laughs> all right. So let's talk um, about a little bit about some of the exciting events that you have coming up, like within the next year. Um, I understand that you are looking for stylists in your salon. 
Yeah, so we are almost a year old. We're almost a year into it, and so far it's so good. Um, it's going to be a year that we've been open in December, so it's been a uh, it's been a hell of a journey. <laughs> it's been it's been fun. Um, so the team that we have now, you know, it's a group of younger stylists. We're all we're a little bit alternative, and we're all up to date with the styles and the trends and education. And you know, it's uh it's really great to have a team. You know. Um, I don't call them my staff and I'm not their boss. You know, I'm, I like to look at myself as a leader for them. I'm not, I don't want to boss them around. I try to just want to help lead them, you know, in the right direction. So with, with the whole team there, it's, uh, it's a great vibe. So we're looking for two more stylists. We have eight chairs right now and six of them are filled. So we're looking for a part-time and a full-time right now, either a barber or a stylist to fill those chairs and to uh, come to the team and come on board. Wow. What a great opportunity to be able to learn with somebody like you, especially what you just described. I mean, being a leader, not being a boss. I mean, all of those things make such a difference in the environment in which people are working. So that sounds amazing. But I live on the East Coast or else I would be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, also, I heard that you're opening an academy next year. Is this true? Yes. So... The first year of opening the salon, there's a, there was a lot that we needed to do, you know, with marketing, with building the team, with getting the salon aesthetic finish and uh, running the Instagram page and the ads and whatnot. So we had a lot of goals that we were checking out the list as the year went on, even with booking education for the year two. And so now what the next goal is for next year is we want to start an academy. So Alchemy Academy will be starting, uh, we're thinking February of 2020 excellent so yeah 2020 20 is uh going to be a good a good month to start because i like twos i'm really <laughs> into numerology numerology so we went with uh february for that reason and we have actually the lineup booked already we're just kind of going throughout what we need to set up for this academy so ideally what the academy at alchemy is going to be is it's going to be held at alchemy collective hair lab and it's going to be a full day course and it's going to be hands on and we're, we would have lunch to break to kind of take a little rest. And then we're going to come back in and do a, um, a look and learn. So, Amazing. but yeah, so we're going to do actually it's a look and learn first, sorry. And then a hands on to finish on live models. And we're going to have three educators there. We're going to be going over a lot of, you know, photography and cutting skills and color placement product tool selection, you know, consultation, um, tailoring products to your client and to maintain their style, the importance of social media. Like we have all the checklists that we want to go over for everybody to really gather in a seven, eight hour day. So that's going to be starting next year. And we're trying to do one of those once a month uh, next year. And yeah, right now it's actually, it's all just in the works right now, setting it up. So we're, we're really excited to have you know, just a, a creative space to be able to start something like this, you know? Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that goes for you and, you know, everything that you guys end up posting and, you know, the direction that this takes. That sounds like a really good opportunity for a lot of people. Yeah, we're really trying to reach out to not only the community of surrounding salons and stylists, but also people from, you know, out of state that want to uh, come learn with us because we actually have, um, a, an educator coming in from Ireland to do this. Wow. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be uh, some heavy hitters coming with us. And, you know, they have a huge following as well. So I think it's just going to be great to, like I said earlier, to be able to surround yourself, you know, with these people and the people that you look up to, to really gain not only a lot of inspiration and motivation, which is one of the key factors that we want to give to people in these academies, but also like elevating in our craft, you know, elevating in the confidence and just having that feeling when you leave a class of just such excitement and happiness. And we really want to give that to people. And to, so to even have the opportunity to do that, you know, we're, uh, we're excited. Me and the other educators are really excited to put this together for everybody. 
Yeah, that sounds great. Well, don't forget about us at America Salon Academy. We we would love to even have you come to the East Coast. We would come to the West Coast, of course, attend this, these types of uh, trainings with you. I mean, that just sounds amazing. So make sure that we're on your email list. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. We would love to definitely collab with you guys, too, and have you guys come to, uh, you know, the hair lab over here or even go over there and set something up with you guys. So, you know, the more education is the better for me. So exactly. I'm totally open for that. Yeah. Uh, All right. So let's talk a little bit about what, like just today, say a typical day today, what would a day in your life be like? Like what in a typical day, what would that look like for you? Typical day. Oh, um, you know, I try to, I try to really maintain a really good balance, um, on an everyday life. And to do that, I feel that meditation is very important. So, my mornings, I usually will sleep in until around, you know, 8.30. I'll get my day started. And once I get up and get kind of washed up, I want to go outside. And, you know, I'm super thankful for a new day. And I say my thanks for the new day that's here to live. And I kind of just set some really good intentions for my day. Like, you know, I, I give thanks that this day is going to be great and that I have, you know, a job and, you know, that I have a place to a roof over my head. So I'll, I like to really give my thanks for the morning, for the day, go do a, you know, 20 minute meditation outside, get a little stretch in. So that's usually my morning and um, it's a great way to start the day off. And then I'll just get, you know, get my day started with work shortly after, after I eat a meal. Like I always have to eat a really big breakfast. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Like I, yeah, like I know a lot of people ain't breakfast people out there. Like, you know, people are like a coffee, coffee people are like, you know, a muffin and go, but like me, like. I will make such a huge breakfast because my day after I meditate and after I stretch and leave the house is eight to 10 hours straight. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah I, sometimes I am standing behind that chair and, you know, a lot of us have been there where your color will get pushed into your lunch or a client will be late and your domino effect goes on throughout the day and your break is shortened and you're going to have to run to the back and take a quick big bite of, you know, a sandwich or something and then run back and, so that's usually my day all the way till nighttime. So it's, it's a super busy day and productive all throughout the salon. And then once when I get home, you know, I kind of just want to have a bite to eat, hit the gym, and then that's pretty much my day. So <laughs> it's, it's a long day. Yeah, that is, that you sound like a hairstylist. That's exactly what mm-hmm. you sound like. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. would you say that you're more of like a pizza and beer kind of guy or like a gym and smoothie kind of kind of person? Oh, I'm definitely a gym smoothie kind of person. Yeah. Yeah. I started, um, I have been on a plant-based diet for a couple of years now. And this year I just started my vegan diet at the beginning of the year. And so far, so good. I've been great. Energy is great, you know, and it's, it's a lifestyle at that point because all you really want to do is eat healthy and take care of yourself. So right. I, I'm definitely the kind of person that treats the body like a temple and You know, I want to do the smoothies and the clean eating and the gym and all that. But I do have my times every now and then. Well, I'll go out and have, you know, a couple beers, you know. So those are my cheat days, beer and pizza. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But for the most part, it's like it's a pretty healthy lifestyle with food and smoothies and juice, juicing and all that. So here's a fun question. I'm not sure if you ever thought about it because you're still young. But do you think that you will ever retire from this industry? Oh, yeah. You know what? I've actually that 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 idea has has come to my mind Um, a few times. Like, what will I do, (laughs) you know, in 25 years from now or 30 years from now? And um, I'm I feel like I have a really a really good entrepreneurial entrepreneurial like mindset. Like I'm I'm really in the entrepreneur site of things and I see things and get ideas and I want to start businesses and you know, I, I, I can see these things that would probably make me some good money in the future and be good for the community. So with me, when I retire from this industry, um, I definitely want to be able to have another business going, but, you know, even if it's not doing hair. Um, I like educating and I can see myself educating too for a while, but being behind the chair doing hair, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, six days a week. That's probably not going to happen for, you know, 25 years. Right. Um, we know we have, we definitely look, calm it down a little bit once the years go on and we start educating more and traveling a little bit more. So uh, to answer your question, um, to, to uh, 
sorry. There's like this little kid right here running next to me. Sorry, <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, the, so to answer your question on the retirement, um, yeah, I think after I retire, I just kind of want to chill and maybe teach hair, not necessarily do it as much. Yeah. That's, that's probably what I would do, yeah, when I retire is just to kind of maybe teach and, you know, go teach maybe once or twice a week. I met, I've actually met a, uh, an educator one time. At a, it was at a Goldwell event, and I was talking to him. He's, I think, in his late 50s, 60s. So I was kind of talking to him about this, uh, this question about retirement and, you know, what do you do when you're in your late 50s and early 60s. Right. And he, he told me, he's like, I go to the salon once a week. I take care of all my clients there and, you know, he's obviously charging a lot of money for these colors that he's doing. So, you know, he's, he's making good money that once a week. And then he's like, yeah, I just travel, um, you know, two or three times a week and I go and teach with Goldwell and I do my thing and I get paid for that. And he makes a really comfortable life lifestyle living with doing that. So um, that's probably what I'll be doing because I don't think I could not do anything, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I'd like to take care of myself now for the future so I have energy when I'm older and I look good and I feel good when I'm older so you know you got to start now right <laughs> right yeah I, I'm with you I'm that's exactly my plan as well so maybe we'll yes. see each other on the beach 25 exactly. years yeah <laughs> exactly still looking good right? that's right <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that's the plan so Mikey thank you so much for being so easy to talk to and for being on this podcast i realize that time is extremely valuable and I appreciate you sharing your time with me today. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great show and um, I loved all the questions that you asked and just hoping that we could, uh, you know, reach out to those stylists in the industry and help inspire them and motivate them is a great thing that you're doing here. So thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. And you are definitely a leader. So thanks for being on this podcast. Thank you so much, Coley. I'm Coley Otzel, and you've been listening to America Salon Academy Conversations. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcast, subscribe, review, and rate this podcast. Join me every other week for another America Salon Academy conversation. Thank you for listening. For more education and information, visit americassalonacademy.com. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's gradation tools to that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money for your podcast with minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app. Or go to anchor.fm to get started.